Well, welcome to Central Trinity uh, and our Monday, Thursday, Good Friday observance. I'm Pastor Steve Judson, and I pray uh, that this finds you well and safe, uh, but also in a place to take a few moments this evening to remember and reflect upon both the power uh, and the presence of Christ in our lives in these moments of Holy Week and reflection. On Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday, as it is sometimes referred, this night on which the Jewish Passover has been observed for over 3,000 years, the children always ask, why do we observe this feast that is before us this night? And the elders among them share the words of Moses, which we find in the Old Testament book of Exodus chapter 12 and verses 24 through 27. You shall obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your children. When you come to the land that the Lord will give you as he has promised, you shall keep this observance. And when your children ask you, what does this observance mean? You shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord. For he passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed down and worshipped. This was the setting on the last night that Jesus gathered with his closest followers and friends that we know of as the disciples. During our time together now, we remember and reflect upon those events on that last day of Jesus' life prior to his crucifixion, and especially upon the crucifixion itself, the selfless act by a loving God to extend his hope and peace and joy to the world. My hope is that when our time together is complete, we will have an even greater appreciation and perhaps better grasp on the significance and power of the death of Jesus Christ. May we pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, our Creator and Sustainer, we give you thanks and praise for the relationship that has been made possible with you through your Son, Jesus Christ, and his sacrifice on the cross for our sins. God, in these moments this evening, we ask that you would draw close to us, and that we and our spirits might draw close to you. We might receive a message from you, and it might remind us all the much more how much you love us and what has been done for us. God, we give you this time now. Work in it in us as you would desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Hear these words from the book of Matthew, chapter 27, in verses 45 through 54. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone, and let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that very moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. And when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Well, following Jesus' personal struggle in the garden, his arrest, and beatings. Jesus, the Son of God, was led away to hang on a cruel Roman cross, murdered as a common criminal. A strange uneasiness settled over those who were lingering near the cross that day. Around the noon hour on that Friday, the dark of night had engulfed the land. An unusual fear had slowly gripped the hearts of those watching this site at Golgotha, the place of the skull, as it was known. For three long hours, the terrors of the darkness had hung like a sentence of judgment. It was now three o'clock in the afternoon, and by now most of the disciples had fled the event on that hill for fear of their own safety. It was not difficult to see that Jesus was near death. His breathing had become labored. Each breath was shallow and the struggle. Where the strength to speak came from is difficult to say, but somehow in unspeakable pain, Jesus cried out words which must have torn through the heart of God. In a loud and passion-filled voice, Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned your back on me? At first, some thought that he was calling for the prophet Elijah, and they watched to see if Elijah would come and save him. Still others knew what he had said. They clearly understood his words. In fact, every faithful Jew should have understood the meaning of these words. They were words that they would have learned as a child and put to memory. You see, these words came from Psalm chapter 22. These words were used to express a sense of total and complete abandonment of being alone before death. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before, sweat drops like blood, the Bible says, splashed to the ground as he struggled with God's will and he prayed to the Father. In that prayer, Jesus prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup be taken from me, and yet not my will but yours be done. And a few verses later, Jesus' last words on the matter were, My Father, if it is not possible for you to take this cup away from me unless I drink it, then may your will be done. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Throughout the centuries, these words have bothered Christians. As Christians, we wonder what is going on in the midst of those words. Why did Jesus say them? Did he truly feel abandoned by his Father? Had God the Father truly abandoned his one and only Son? As we reflect on the crucifixion of Jesus, I'd like us to also reflect on those words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For in them we can begin to feel the pain of Jesus' sacrifice. And I'm not necessarily talking about the physical pain, even though that was great, but the emotional and spiritual pain of one utterly and completely abandoned. For the first time in all eternity, the Father's face had been hidden from the Son. He was forsaken. 
Jesus had never experienced such a moment in his life on earth or in all eternity before. But now on the cross, he saw nothing but darkness. And this darkness was not just on the outside. No, the darkness which he was now experiencing seeped all the way to the soul. The Father was gone and the Son was completely and utterly alone. Up until now, Jesus had known only the light, the light of God shining in and through him, for God had always been with him. To say that he had a great relationship with his dad would be a gross understatement. There is no intimacy which one can know that is greater than the intimacy that exists within the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three, yet one. Now it was as if one of the three was cut off from the Trinity. The darkness was unbearable. In these moments, Jesus must have felt complete hopelessness, utterly abandoned by his Father. In ancient Christian tradition, these words of Jesus from the cross have been referred to as the cry of dereliction. Now the meaning of the word derelict is abandoned, no longer lived in, neglected, and in ruins. Like an abandoned ship with no cargo, bound for no port, floating in an ocean of helplessness and despair, and no longer useful. When Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He wasn't just quoting from the Old Testament. Deep down in the depths of his soul, Jesus felt alone, empty, spiritually in ruins like the derelict ship with no purpose, just floating on a path to nowhere. Jesus had prayed that this cup, this judgment, this, this punishment might be removed from him, yet even more so. Like a child who wants to please his father, Jesus wanted to be faithful to his father's will for his life. And since there was no other way, Jesus took that cup, a cup of suffering and death. This was the Father's will, and thus Jesus surrendered to it. Jesus took the cup and drank it, every last drop, the suffering, the lashings, the crown of thorns, and worst of all, the complete and utter abandonment from the God he had known forever. And as he drank every last drop, at the point of separation from God the Father, he cried out in desperation, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned your back on me? Why won't you even look at me? Abba, Father. From these words, we know that Jesus is at that very moment feeling the tremendous burden of the sin's of the world on his shoulders. This one who knew no sin now knew sin and the consequences of sin. Jesus in this frail human condition must have been terrified at the absence of God and instead the presence of the wrath of God as God unleashed his full fury towards sin on the son he dearly loved. It makes me wonder what the father's pain must have felt like. This was his boy. I, I think of my own son and I try to put myself in God's place in this story and wrap my brain around trying to do to my son what he had to do to his. It's almost too much to ponder, too heavy to think about, too painful to reflect on. This separation from God, which Jesus experienced, was the payment for sin, the wages of sin, you might say. Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The payment for sin is death, friends. Spiritual death. Separation from God. There on the cross, Jesus received the wages of sin, the payment for the entire world's evil, including yours and mine. He was there in our place. It was for our sins, for your sins and my sins that he died. It was for our sake that he was abandoned. It was our fault he felt 
felt hopeless. It was for us he was separated, cut off from the intimacy of the Father. We deserve the hell Jesus experienced. For us, he was forsaken. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, I'll tell you why. Because he who knew no sin for us became sin. Jesus was forsaken so that we might know the forgiveness of God. For Jesus, these words were the emotional and spiritual pain caused by the price of salvation. That price has now been paid in full for each and every one of us, but only because of the suffering and despair of the darkest moment in the history of the world.
Well, in just a few days, we will be celebrating the resurrection and the excitement and joy of uh, Easter. But I think it's very appropriate for us to take a little bit of time between now and then to reflect on the heaviness that Jesus felt and the sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us, that we might know joy and hope and peace and comfort, that even in the midst of the current world in which we live and the challenges that we face, that because he went voluntarily to the cross, we can have hope and comfort and joy. In these next couple of days, as we are preparing for Easter and that celebration, may we truly be able to give God thanks for this incredible sacrifice, for he gave it to each of us out of a love that was so great we cannot possibly imagine, but which he freely extended to us. This night, may you receive this message from God and be grateful in Jesus' name.